Everybody, so as you know, we're working on the scripts of the next few country episodes, which means this is gonna be a filler week. I already promised you guys a long time ago, like a long time ago, that I would do the autonomous communities of Spain, sometimes called autonomies. Now, this is an interesting one because Spain is like one of the weirdest administratively divided nations on earth. Like it's not a federation, but it's kind of like a very loosely held decentralized unitary state. What does that mean? Basically, they are one country, yes, but everybody just kind of like sticks to their clique and does what they want with minimal tribute to the centralized government. On top of that, Spain is also a figurehead monarchy. Like they have a king, but his powers are limited. Within Spain, there are 17 autonomies and two autonomous cities, Ceuta and Melilla. Each autonomy has their own president and the cities have president mayors. Ceuta and Melilla have the right to become autonomous communities, but they choose not to, probably because you know, they're really incredibly small. All of the autonomies are divided into four categories, nationalities, regions, historical regions, and cities. Obviously Ceuta and Melilla. What is a nationality? It's not exactly clearly defined within the constitution, but a nationality is basically an autonomous community where the inhabitants have a cultural and historical tie to the area, usually often linguistic as well. Within the autonomies, there are nine nationalities. It gets a little confusing, but we'll explain. Like right now, let's begin. First up, Andalusia, capital, Sevilla. Status, nationality. Fun fact, their flag has Hercules and two lions on it. Andalusia is the largest autonomy in size and population with over eight and a half million people. It's the southernmost part of the Iberian Peninsula. It's basically on the Strait of Gibraltar. Basically, Andalusia was like the most heavily absorbed and influenced part of the Moorish conquests. And today you still kind of see like that North African influence all over the place, especially in like architecture. And the people here actually speak with a very distinct Andalusian dialect. You even hear some Arabic influence in it. This is kind of the place with a lot of those like, you know, Spanish stereotypes, you know, flamenco, bullfighting, Pablo Picasso, was born here, gazpacho. Oh, and this is also that place where they do the procession of Holy Week and those guys wear those long caps that look like the Ku Klux Klan, but they're not the Ku Klux Klan. Don't get weirded out if you see it. Aragon, capital, Zaragoza, status, nationality. There's a joke. How do you get 10 Aragonese people in a Mini Cooper? You tell them they can't. Historically, Aragon was one of the many disjointed kingdoms back before Spain was unified in the medieval times. They actually had a confederacy that extended all the way to Italy back in the 15th century. Some people say that Spain was unified when Ferdinand of Aragon married Isabella of Castile, but eh, that's up for dispute. Ah. All right, I'm in the middle of filming. Sorry. I just messed it up, didn't I? Yeah, you ruined my life. They do have their own language, Aragonese, which is mostly kind of spoken by people in the mountains. They have some interesting traditions like the Jota dance and music. They have the Carnival de Bilsa. The famous painter Goya was from here. And it's the home of the Virgen de Pilar, the patron saint of Spain. The Principality of Asturias. Capital, Oviedo. Status, historical region. Why is it called a principality? According to a tradition that dates back to the 14th century, this place was designated to be the location used in the substantive title to heir apparent to the Spanish throne, meaning whoever is next in line for the monarchy is the prince or princess of Asturias. Today, the title belongs to Princess Leonor, the king's daughter. Otherwise, it's a pretty chill laid back place right next to the Bay of Biscay and the Cantabrian Mountains in the south. They do have their own Asturian language. However, it's not really widely spoken anymore. Lots of caves like this one for Paleolithic art and another one with a church in it. Bagpipes and cider. They love their cider out here. The Balearic Island the international party place. Capital, Palma, status, nationality. Although it's funny because nobody actually calls themselves Balearic. They all kind of like self-identify with their corresponding island. So like Mallorca, they're Mallorcan. There's four main islands. It's in the Mediterranean. It's got that Mediterranean cool chill vibe. Like Catalonia, Catalan is co-official and spoken here. This castle is probably their most iconic site. Great beaches. They have some really interesting foods. I've already explained this in the German Bundeslander video, but like Germans consider this area like their 17th state. You'll see Germans everywhere. It's ridiculous. It's like there's even signs in German. Basque. Ooh, this is a fun one. Capital, Vitoria Gasteis. Status, nationality. Now this is one of the most distinct regions in all of Spain. Basque people are very unique. They speak their own language, which is not even related to any other Indo-European language. They have a strong culture and identity that they hold on to very dearly. There's even Basque people in parts of France as well. They are one of the most rich and developed regions in all of Spain, and it's partially because they have like a special tax system. This 
gives them a little bit more autonomy than all the other communities. Now here's the thing, at one point they did kind of have like an independence movement and it got a little ugly. Well, let's just put it this way. 46 seats out of the 75 seat parliament belong to pro-independence movement parties. Anyway, culturally, they have traditions like Harry Kirolak, the pilota or pelota sport, which is similar to squash. And a fun fact, the beret actually originated in Basque country, the Canary Islands. And yes, Canaries do actually originate from this area. Anywho, capital, oh geez, it's very long. Santa Cruz de Tenerife and Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Woo! Status, nationality. This is basically the Hawaii of Spain. It's made of seven main islands. There's great surfing. They're famous for their bananas and banana dishes. It's been said that they speak Spanish somewhat similar to the Caribbean Spanish. These islands were actually originally inhabited by the Guanches, which were cousins of the Berber people in North Africa. Africa. And today they still kind of retain some of that former Guanche culture. Like a lot of people here might still have Guanche names. And sometimes they sound very funny. Like I was told there's a test if you can tell if a name is a Canarian name or a Pokemon. They also have Mont Tiede, the tallest point in all of Spain. But the coolest thing about these islands, in my opinion, is Silbo Gomero. And it's a communication system completely done within whistles. You can literally say entire sentences just by whistling. They actually teach it in schools. Canta Cabria, capital Santander, status historical region. This is another cold region of Spain. You know, they got the Cantabrian mountains, which are named after them. They used to be a part of the region of Old Castile, but then they're like, eh, nah, we're out. This area is actually named after the Cantabri, tribes of people that actually inhabited the area before the Romans came in. You can even see some of the ancient Cantabri symbols on things like their coat of arms. Today, they actually kind of retain some of the ancient Cantabrian traditions and culture. Let's see, uh, famous for the La Viherna festival, rooted in ancient pagan customs. Let's see, they also have a cave with cave paintings and a torture museum in Santillana del Mar. Oh, and they love anchovies here. Castile y Leon. Now they don't have a capital officially. But the main city where most of the government offices are located at is Valladolid. That's an interesting name. Status, historical region. Now this is a large region, but very sparsely populated. It only has like two and a half million people. This autonomous community was basically formed in 1983 when they smashed nine former provinces together. What do you want me to do? Just go to the porch. I'll let you in. Historically, this place actually played a significant role in forming what is now Spain today. In fact, many people will refer to the standard dialect of Spanish spoken as Castilian, as this is basically where it came from. The people here say that they speak the purest form of Spanish. Basically, at one point, there was a kingdom of Leon and a kingdom of Castile. In 1301, they merged together and they pretty much never looked back since then. As the name implies, there's tons of castles and historical sites here. It's also the site of the first parliament in Europe. And and uh, what else? They love eating blood sausage here. Okay, Castilla La Mancha, capital Toledo, status region. This is kind of like Castilla and Leon's like chill, cool, fun sister. People and things from here are called Manchengo, which if you guessed, yes, that's where Manchengo cheese comes from. Basically, you know that book Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes, probably the most iconic piece of Spanish literature. Yeah, that book basically sums up this place. It takes place here. Big open fields with windmills. Toledo was known historically in medieval times as like the place where all Christians, Jews, and Muslims kind of live together side by side peacefully. At one point they had a huge iron industry, which is kind of why this place is known for making like the best pocket knives and swords. Windmills, swords, and pocket knives. Woohoo. Catalonia, capital Barcelona, status, nationality. The big guy, you've probably heard this one in the news a few times. I already did a video explaining the whole Catalonia thing, so I'm not even gonna get into it too much. Quick distinction though, this is the Catalonia flag, this is the Catalonia independence flag, and this is the Catalonia independence communist party flag. Make sure you know the difference between all three. In a nutshell, they are the second most populous autonomous region in Spain after Andalusia with about 7.5 million people. And they have the second largest city, Barcelona. Obviously they speak their own language, Catalan, which is another Latin based language like Spanish, but it sounds pretty different. I've heard it and I would argue it's kind of like if Spanish and French had a baby and they are very uh, politically active to say the least. Long story short, Catalonia makes a lot of money and they don't like being told how to run things. But culturally speaking, my favorite surrealist artist Dali was born here, as well as Anthony Gaudi. By the way, finish that church. Jeez, it's been almost like 200 years. They are known for making the castells or human towers. They have their own distinct Catalan cuisine. And on one thing you might see a lot over here, this dude that's pooping. They love it. They, there's like statues and figurines of a guy pooping all the time. I don't know why they like it. Extremadura, capital Merida, status region. This place is kind of like the butt of all the jokes in Spain. It's very rural, relatively 
relatively poor. It's like, it's like the West Virginia of Spain. It's actually a very important place for wildlife though. They have one of these huge nature reserves. Uh, apparently many famous conquistadors were from here. They also have a really famous Roman theater and there's also a metal band called Extra Maduro. I was told to tell Keith that. But one thing they are known for is having pretty good food, specifically jamon. It's made from black Iberian pigs that roam freely instead of factory farm pigs. Extra Madura. They go extra on their jamon. Galicia, capital Santiago de Compostela, status, nationality. The gateway to the Atlantic. Galicians are basically cousins to the Portuguese. Their language is pretty similar and sometimes intelligible to Portuguese. And they're unique in that they actually have some Celtic roots. Like the Celts actually like inhabited this area a long time ago. Today you can actually even see lots of remnants of their Celtic past. One of the largest Catholic pilgrimages in the world happens in Santiago de Compostela. Unfortunately, it's also kind of known that this is kind of like the place where all the drugs come into Spain. But otherwise, they are seafood masters. Some of you guys commented on my Portugal video. You guys said that Galician octopus is better than Portuguese octopus. I don't know. I'd like to try it out for myself and see if that's true. Madrid, capital. Madrid. It's also the capital of the whole country. Status, region. This is where the center, center, of government is obviously located. You have the Moncloa Palace, the Parliament, the Supreme Court, the Royal Palace. So obviously, politically speaking, this place is kind of a big deal. The people here are very metropolitan. They take huge pride in their Madrid identity. There's a saying, Madrid has everything but a beach. There's a lot of nicknames that people give to Madrid people. Everybody knows they have a really good soccer or football team. And honestly, there's so many cool sites. I can't even list them all. If you want to see Picasso's Guinerica, it's actually in Madrid. I was so mad. I thought it was in Barcelona and I missed it. What's really cool is they actually have a real Egyptian temple. It was donated by Egypt and transported in the 60s. The other cool thing is that uh, you got to... How did you even get in my house? Oh. Of course, Madrid is obviously a food lover's haven. Calamari sandwiches, huevos estrellados, and uh, churros actually originated from here. The region of Murica. No, I'm just kidding, it's Murcia. Capital, Murcia just like the region. Status, region. This is one that not a lot of people, including Spanish people, even know a lot about because it's kind of like off the beaten trail. It's kind of like the uh, Charleston, South Carolina of Spain. It's like a cool place with chill vibes and beaches, but not too many people are going here because you know, Barcelona and Valencia are getting all the attention. It's got a lot of cool golf resorts, uh, Roman ruins and Carthaginian ruins. They are big on vegetable producing and they have this interesting tradition called the burial of the sardine. It happens after Holy Week. Week, they basically just burn a big sardine. I, it, I don't know. Spain has a lot of weird traditions. The chartered community of Navarre. Capital Pamplona, status, nationality. Now this is a tricky one because there's a lot of backstory that gets tied in with modern identity claims. I mean, it's even called a chartered community because even the mapping took some time when they were trying to figure out how to draw this place. It used to be the kingdom of Navarre, which was actually ruled by a Basque dude. And eventually the kingdom was dissolved and then split. It's a little controversial, but if you ask a Basque person, some of them might say that this place should belong to the Basque country. And like the Basque region, they also have their own special tax system, which gives them more autonomy. But uh, aside from all that, they are known for having really good Blackthorn liquor. They have that interesting Waldun Fest in January. And you've probably seen the bull runs in Spain where people run with the bulls. Yeah, that happens here in Pamplona. La Rioja, capital Logroño, status region. The smallest region in size besides the Balearic Islands and the smallest in population besides the autonomy cities. It gets its name from Rio and Oja, which is the name of a river that passes through here. Sometimes this place is called the Zone of Seven Valleys because it's a wonderful source of rivers and tributaries that flow through. Basically, this place is wine country. The fertile valleys make it perfect for vineyards. They even have a wine battle in the town of Haro. Wine cellars, wine shops, it all dominates the culture and industry here. Oh, and there's a really cool spa town, Arnedillo. Okay, Valencia, capital Valencia. Status, nationality. This is kind of like Catalonia's attractive, but kind of slightly more aggressive and troublesome little sister. I mean, the place is absolutely gorgeous. We all know, but it's also kind of known for being like the most politically corrupt area in Spain. I mean, everybody kind of knows about the Gurtel case. And to make things even more complicated, Valencian people will say that they have a Valencian language, but a lot of linguists and Catalonians will say it's basically a dialect of Catalan. I mean, yeah, there's a few small differences in pronunciation 
spelling and vocabulary, but basically we understand you. I was told uh, Valencians are kind of obsessed with fire and explosions. They're known for the Ninots, massive cardboard or paper mache monuments, and all of them are totally burned to the ground except for one, which is the winner. All while this is happening, the Mascleta shoot a barrage of fireworks in the streets. Food-wise, obviously they're known for Valencia oranges. And the most famous dish, paella. Paella to Valencia is like what pizza is to Naples, Italy. They invented it and they are very proud of it. Like they don't even call it paella if it's made anywhere else. They call it arroz con cosas. Don't even get a Valencian started on paella. And finally, that brings us to the autonomous cities and the plazas de soberania. Now, we already kind of explained this in the Morocco episode. Check that video out. But in case you need a recap, basically, these two cities and four other small islands and one incredibly small peninsula are like the last remnants of Spain's larger former territory in Morocco. Now, even though treaties were established in the 19th century, obviously Morocco disputes these areas. It's even said that they were created by shooting a cannonball and wherever the cannonball landed would be the border. Probably not true, but that's the legend. Anywho, Ceuta is located conveniently on a narrow isthmus at the narrow Strait of Gibraltar. Originally, it was a strategic Phoenician military base and trading port. Long story short, in 1668, King Carlos II got it from Portugal. Similar, Melia started with Phoenician, Punic, and Berber roots. And this place was actually even conquered earlier in the 15th century by this guy. Both of these cities, of course, have centuries-old fortification walls and towers. They both, of course, have lots of influence from Morocco. And even though they come at a dispute, these are actually kind of really cool, chill cities. They have a unique Spanish North African charm. The atmosphere is more European, of course. Lots of business and tourism. Although, you know, it's just the cities are kind of heavily bordered from the Morocco side, as it is kind of seen as like a backdoor entrance into the EU. In the past, there were even controversies of people getting caught in the barbed wire or dying trying to cross the border. So that's it. That's uh, that's how you make a Spain. Can we get pancakes yet? Dude, I'm waiting. Okay, fine. So hungry. Okay, fine. Let's go art. Let's get pancakes. And thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you learned a little bit about Spain. Now I got to write some scripts. Stay cool. Stay tuned.